All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Agency Intelligence, where I give you real agents inside real agencies, giving you the real agency intelligence and not the artificial that they try to make you believe out there. This is Cass, and I am back. I'm actually back with one of our favorite individuals in the world. His name is Chris Green. If you are on Facebook and you don't know who Chris Green is and you're in the insurance industry, well, then just turn this off right now because I don't know where you're living. Uh, Chris Green, who likes to post a lot and comment because his thoughts, he's got a quick brain like me, and he thinks of things, and, uh, and, 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 and I'm just really excited, really. I really, truly am. If you guys know uh, me, uh, Chris Green and I have a good relationship. Uh, we've kind of just worked and helped each other. He helps me with my flood. Um, he's in our mastermind, and uh, if you don't follow Chris, you should. To watch his rise from where he was to where he is now, and I truly believe, and I and I was just telling this to some, I was telling it to Josh Witt last night. So Josh is probably listening. He knows that I text him this, and I said I think he has more potential. Chris Green does than most agents in our industry because most agents are just going to rock their agency, but Chris Green is going to rock the industry based on what he's doing. Um, and I say that, and I don't say that lightly because. Other people out there do brain do flood loyal listeners, but no one's doing it the way he's doing it. There's no one who's putting out content, and we're going to talk about that today. Uh, Chris and I did not have this podcast actually scheduled um, until like literally three or four weeks ago because he said, "Cast, there's something coming down the pike October 1st. And I was like, okay, Chris, yeah, hey, man, I'm kind of booked up a little bit. Let's move it out. And then I saw this. These I started seeing emails in the last like two weeks from one who was on IAOA and they were like, um, they were like, oh my God, I just got the, my flood quote. It was seven hundred eighty dollars last year, and now it's six thousand. And then all these other agents started popping in, and they're like, yeah, it's this new rating. And so, Chris, you might remember I jumped right over to you, and said, dude, we got to do this pod, we got to do this now before October first yeah. comes. So what we're gonna do is we already are booked out until October, but you're listening this probably in the second or third week of September because we got to get it out as soon as we possibly can so that it can help agents. That's what we're all about here, giving a voice to those who have no voice on agents' influence, and here we're giving you real agency intelligence. So, Chris, welcome to the uh, podcast, buddy. Thanks for having me, Jason. Yeah, yeah, it's always a great, you can always, everybody's watching this. If you're not watching it on YouTube, you're listening to it, and you're thinking, what kind of hat does he have on? Does he have his backwards hat on, or does he have a pile of shit? Well, he first had his backwards hat on, and now if you're watching YouTube, you can see his pile of shit that he has on top of his head. And it doesn't say shit, it just says happen. So if you don't know Chris, he has a uh, hat on right now that looks like a big pile of poop that is on top of his head, and it says happens on it. And that's what he does. And uh, one of the things, we probably maybe get in the story, maybe not, but he actually was in front of a bank talking to the uh, head of a bank one time about his flood, and he walked in with that hat on. Um, now, people would have said to themselves, how in the hell and why in the hell would he do that? But you don't know. Chris walked away with the account. So that's just what he does. All right. So with uh, that said, Chris, dude, how are you, my friend? Uh, I am great this week. You know, it's been a super busy week. This is Hurricane Ida week. So I feel like I'm producing about 100 pieces of content right now. And just, I mean, so many moving parts. Uh, this is I mean, this is your time, week. dude. I mean, hurricanes come. This is you, babe. Well, it is, but these are different stories. This aren't these aren't coastal issues we're having. These are inland issues, which is what I always warn about with these things. And so now we're just trying to help some people recover Chris, as quick as possible. Real quick before you start getting into all this shit that you're going to geek out on, because I love it. Give people your background, because I don't. I, you know that whenever I post, I always tell your background, because I don't think people understand. Like me, I'm just an insurance agent, right? I didn't go to college to go to risk school or anything like that. Very few agents did. Give them your background, man. All right. So, so my name is Chris Green. I own the Flood Insurance Guru. I grew up with a severe learning disability. Uh, before, learning disabilities were really separated. They, you know, this is back when they put you all into a secluded class. You know, whether you had Down syndrome or you just had a slight learning disability, you were all packaged together. So I got pulled out of English in the seventh grade. I didn't take another English course until college. I wasn't even supposed to go to college, but I had two educators who stood by my side. One was my mom. One was another educator, which I named my consulting company after. It took me five tries just to pass my first English course. 
Wow. Came home with a 1.9 GPA, and my dad said, you got one more semester, and I'm pulling you out. Uh, then I, I met my wife, and I grew up pretty quickly. But <laughs> Well, that's the truth for all of us, isn't it? Well, really. I mean, you know, like, you know, not only did she stay on me, but as I said, I struggled. I was three years behind in college. I took 21 hours a semester my senior year every semester. I made up two and a half years because we were getting married the week after graduation. And then I went back to start on my master's a year later because I wanted to change it. My wife said, like, can I change your, your degree? We're getting she's married. A, she's an educator, right, Chris? She is. She actually, teach, she actually teaches special ed. Okay. All right. Sorry to interrupt you. Long so, well. mm -hmm. so um, but she teaches that. I go back and I said, you know, I want to start on my master's on this. So I started on my master's in emergency management with a focus on hazard and flood mitigation. It was her, the day Hurricane Katrina hit. I just wanted to be an emergency manager, local level, maybe working on weapons of mass destruction overseas. Well, Hurricane Katrina hits, and I studied it for two years. I ended up graduating top of my class for my master's, but didn't really get into this till about five or six, seven years later when I got into the insurance industry because I just wanted to get into the national catastrophe side. But then I bought a house in a flood zone and had a terrible experience. Realtor wow. didn't know what to do. The lender I don't know didn't if I knew this, Chris. Yeah, and so they're like, I'm sorry, you can't buy this house. Your flip premium is going to be $3,000. It throws off your debt-to-income ratio. I said, here's my policy at $300. And they're like, well, how did you do that? I said, well, this is built to compliance. That is a condition for what we call a grandfathered policy. So here's my policy through FEMA, that $300, $350. At that point, I realized, you know, this industry really needs a lot more education on this. Yeah. And so when I went independent in 2015, came up with my website, floodinsuranceguru.com. is a joke. I just wanted to use something to start the conversation, but then people start asking me more, learning what my background was in. And then in 2018, I had to make a shift. I was like, you know, do we keep offering, you know, being a generous as an insurance company, or do we just go full-fledged flood? And, you know, that's when I met Nicholas Ayers and got into Marcus Sheridan. and I said, we're going to do a 30-day video challenge. We just want to see how it impacts our business. And it was a big difference. You know, people were asking for information. So in 2019, I said, we're going to do 365 flood education videos in 365 days. Spent the entire year doing it, started a podcast, started blogging. And when COVID hit, we grew 300% because everyone was at home consuming that content. Well, in two weeks at Brainshare, the same day I'm scheduled to meet Marcus will also be the same day that our thousandth video in a thousand days is published. Yeah, that's and right. So, I forgot you know, about that. That brings us to today where in September, you know, we will hit our $1 million book. We'll hit our 1,000th client. Uh, we'll get the meet Marcus, and I just hired two additional flood education specialists who have a background in education to help me do the same thing I'm trying to do. I can tell them, you know, I'm here to hire world changers. World changers. You know, sometimes one of the things that I tell my sons when they go to work, um, and I, I told this to my older son who just joined our agency and got licensed. I told him, he said, Dad, so what am I going to do at the agency? And I said, well, here's the deal. When I hire somebody, I usually hire employees. I'm not hiring you to be an employer. I'm hiring you to be an employer. I said, so that's important. So um, what, and I explained to them what that meant. My 16-year-old just got a job at Culver's. Oh, by the way, paying $15 an hour right now. <laughs> paying $15 an hour. My largest client is an assisted living home. And the people in there working 12 hours a day assisted, assisting these um these uh, elderly get paid twelve fifty an hour. My son makes fries and gets fifteen. So I told him, I said, "Son, you're not going in there to do a position. You're going in there thinking as an employer. I want you to watch how the whole thing operates, you know." And so he's always coming back with like, "Dang, Dad, they do this and they do this." So I love what you said that right there. You're looking for world. What'd you say? World changers. I'm not world changers. Everyone said, "Oh, how many salespeople do you have in your organization?" I said, "None." I said, "If someone comes to me with this awesome sales background, they're not a good fit for us." Because we are an education company that owns an insurance, a flood insurance company, and a flood consulting company. And education will always be first for us. Tell us what's happening on October 1st, Chris. So on October 1st, the National Flood Insurance Program is finally releasing Risk Rating 2.0. At least as of right now when we shoot this podcast, unless we get some last second change, which will completely change the flood insurance industry as we know it. You know, it will basically take FEMA from the 16th century and bring them to the 21st century. You know, it's going to change it where flood insurance is no longer based on flood zones. Flood zones will just be used whether flood insurance is going to be required or not. You know, rating factors, I call it the fingerprint of flood insurance. I've got a flyer the out finger, there. That yeah, I'm yeah, using. yeah, I remember that, yeah. And the reason I call it the fingerprint is because, 
you know, right now as we stand here, someone goes, hey, what's my premium at Flood Zone X? I can tell you the same premium across the country. Well, that's all changing. It's all going to be based on individual structure, like a fingerprint with us. We're all different. And so it's going to be based on distance to water, the type of flooding, flood frequency, the replacement cost of the building, the difference between the ground and the lowest habitational floor. So it's got all these moving parts. You know, claims. After you file a claim, now a claim could impact your rate down in the future on top of the maximum 18% rate increase every year. And so I've been traveling the country, basically addressing every one of these changes in every state. Now we're addressing all these big changes in every major city. And I also have my team doing model quoting so we can actually say, okay, Atlanta, Georgia, in your area, these are the actual changes we're seeing. You know, these are policies we've quoted in this neighborhood where we can actually see these changes happening. Now, now let me ask you this, Chris, because I want to get back to this because uh, loyal listeners, please go out. Where, what is your YouTube? Flood Insurance Guru. So go out there and get in and, and look at it because you've done these, these, I mean, literally every state, right? Yes, yeah, every state. Yeah, every state. So if you're in Wyoming, you can call and get this. Now, just a second on that, Chris. Not call ask, you can go to our YouTube channel and we have a playlist on our YouTube channel for every single state. It's unbelievable. There ain't no, there's no reason. It's just, it's phenomenal what you're doing, buddy. Um, now here, let me ask you this. So last night, uh, today, loyal listeners, it is September 2nd. Um, last night we saw a bunch of, vi of, uh, pictures inside Bradley flowers. And then we're sending to us. We have this group for all of us podcasters and they were showing us, are their friends who were sending them pictures from New Jersey and uh, New York, literally like water just rushing in their windows. I mean, coming, come, this guy had a portable, um, air conditioner on the wall and water is just pouring out of it. And I'm thinking to myself, is that flood? Because I'm that ignorant in it. Was there a difference between flood, 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 and flash flood? Well, it's still, you know, that's still going to be something that's covered by flood. But flash okay. flood is that it happens quick. And actually, this is the first flash flood warning emergency ever in New York City history. That's why I'm asking the question. Does that mean that you're going to start seeing flood policies start to say, hey, especially I'm not just I'm uh, loyal listeners. I'm just stating it with it being a blue state. I mean, would you not to start to see that being mandated more as far as protection for mortgages and loaning companies? Would well, you, would like you I said, say? the problem, the big problem has been in the past. It's all been based on the flood zone. And, you know, I've always actually been a big believer. If there's a mortgage company, you know, everybody should be required to have it. But come back with a lower premium program where you can spread those costs over. You know, if there's a mortgage, two, three hundred dollars, every homeowner, you know, just like home insurance, you got to have it. And I think you can, you know, spread a lot of that risk doing that. But yeah, you're especially after the flooding like this. This is what triggers what's called a flood insurance study report. You know, what caused it? You know, what happened? It takes about three or five years to study it, and then FEMA comes back and says, "Hey, we're changing the flood zones in your area after coming to an agreement with your local community after we did this report on this event." And that's where all these flood map changes, because we cover every flood map change in the country. I just covered about 15 of them in the last 10 days of when it's happening, why it's happening, the amount of properties it's impacting, you know, can you fight it? Wow. Wow. Why did they do this? Why did they do this rating? What was the reason behind it, Chris? Well, the real, the real reason is they should have done it. I mean, as I said, this brings them into the 21st century. You know, a lot of people don't want to hear that, but some of these people have had subsidized rates for 50 years. And what that means is the government's basically taking care of 50% of the premium. And so like, well, it's just going to kill them. Because they're not thinking that, hey, I'm only paying half. They're just thinking, hey, I got a pretty cheap rate. Gotcha. The other thing is they're not going to be able to survive unless they come up with a better model that helps them understand how flood risk equals flood premium. You know, offering a $700 flood insurance policy every year on a beach house in Florida. I mean, that's cool. just not realistic. It's not going to happen. And then charging $6,000 for someone who may be way inland, right? Yeah. Now, let me ask you, what do they do? Right. Like you get a guy, he calls you, excuse me, guy or woman, they call you and they're like, Chris, this was eight hundred dollars last year. And now it's four grand. Is there anything they can do? And that's what we walk them through. You know, that's why I was talking about we never give somebody a quote. We give them what's called a flood risk proposal. So we look at history of flooding in their area. We look at their flood zone. We look at water tables and development and area and explain to them, hey, this is why the changes are happening. But we think we can actually change your flood zone here so that your flood risk and your flood premium are more matched up. I've got about 10 of those I'm working on right now. One in Arizona is a big commercial client where the flood zone changed in the parking lot, but the lender didn't even know that. And we could show them, hey, you know, we can do this policy, no problem. I said, the risk is still there, but here's where the line's at. Wow. Wow. So you can, you can kind of walk in. Do you think you'll be successful at helping them get those premiums down? 
Well, you, that's where, you know, a private's going to come into play, too. You know, it's going to depend. You know, FHA is still you know, closed. They had open comment period about six months ago. They were supposed to make a ruling. They still haven't. Those are going to be the people that see the biggest impact here. See, private floods already been doing this. They call it a flood risk score. Why do you think private companies won't ah. take their thing to the FEMA wheel? Because they're in it for the money. They understand, that, hey, we're not taking on that risk. So one thing that I want to say, though, and I apologize, loyal listeners are risky. I, I'm taking a lot of notes here because I have, I'm going to actually take this information and I'm going to t explain it to my team. One of the things that we've started to do since this year is start to af ask and offer flood because it's just like if I write Nat, Nat Gen, they just automatically give you a quote, right? If you're doing a PL Raider, um, you can just click a button. And so that's something we're trying to offer to up our policy. Well, I got, I got so, a video on my YouTube channel where I actually did a presentation to a mortgage company. I'll walk them through all the changes so if you want it let me know i shared it with another insurance agency last night as well to help their team where do they reach out to you at uh they sent me a facebook message and said hey do you have okay. anything on this and i said here's the actual recording that i went through and did for a mortgage company a couple weeks ago so chris you're on facebook oh, yeah. <laughs> well it depends you know i'm in jail half the time <laughs> oh, i had to chris where are you going just well, starting wonder, today I'm, going forward, where's Chris Green going in the next three to five years? Well, I'll tell you where I'm going in the next two weeks, and that's brain share. Oh, yeah, 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 brain share. Yeah, 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 yeah. But where is the flood guru? What do you see as your plan for the next one, three, five, well, ten years? Well, I'm already making that shift, which is why I've hired some flood education specialists. I said, look, there's two things in this world I can't teach. That's character and personality. I can teach you everything else about flood, but I can't teach you to smile, with my customer to hear you smile through the phone. And I said, that's what I need because I'm shifting my role more to a training role and to a public education outreach role where I continue to travel the country doing this education. I mean, growing up with severe learning disability, that's my passion. You know, I'm not helping the world by trying to do a flood quote from somebody. I'm helping the world by trying to get information out there. Well, I, I, I greatly appreciate that. You know, one of the situations we had, we were dealing with a um, a multiple, it's a, a nine or 10 location, I think it's 10 location agent or business that we do. And they've got all this, this, this flood insurance and some of it wasn't covered by FEMA. So we had to go to a broker business and then we had to get a excess of $10 million and all this stuff. And, and that was really new to us at that time. This is a, this uh, is a $109,000 revenue account and we were doing everything we can. And Chris, you were a huge part in that because the, because one of the things was their expense is like, thinking about it, it's around forty, forty-five thousand dollars a year is what they're paying in flood insurance alone. And when they came to us, they said, "Is this right? Is this is this? Are, I mean, are we doing what we're supposed to do? Do we have the coverage we do?" Their agent had neglected them for about eight to ten years, which is how we got it on a BOR, loyal listeners. And yeah, I did say one hundred nine thousand in revenue, not premium. That's right, BOR, cold-blooded killer. David Carruthers, that's right, CBK for life. So one of the things we did is we reached out to Chris. Travis and I looked at each other like, oh yeah, well, you know, let us get back to our flood specialists and we'll get back with you on this. And Travis and I are driving back and we're like, son of a bitch. He's like, you think, you think, that, you think that Chris could help us? I said, well, I don't know anybody else that could help us. I mean, I'm not calling anybody else. I'm not even calling the company because he can help us. And Chris, you did. Now, what was amazing is you didn't take any money for it. And really, it was pretty simple. You said, Cass, they've got this and this. You might want to think about that. But they're pretty good where they are. And it was really confident for us to go back and, uh, and be able to deliver that to them. Um, we gave them a little couple details, little tricks you gave us, but uh, before that, so I say that so much is this is not a promotion for uh, fl the flood guru. I don't make any money from it. Chris and I are just good friends. But when I started seeing, when he reached out to me, as I said earlier, and said, Cass, this is going to be an issue. And then I started hearing agents have an issue. That's what agency intelligence is about. Is, is, is bringing you that real agency intelligence. And that's why we hang out with the man that we do call Chris Green. So Buddy, um, anything else that you want to bring up? I know this has been short, but that was our point of this whole thing. If you guys have listened, if you really like and you think Chris Green and I have a good podcast, we've done two um, others prior, so you can go back and listen to those as well. I will say some things that are staying the same with this program real quick are going to be things like grandfather policies, policy assumptions. Now, those things are eventually going to be uh, phased out. While you can still grandfather a policy, the benefit's going to be keeping that premium there, but eventually these premiums are going to come up with what's called full risk, Coverage amounts are not changing right now. 
forms aren't changing yet when it comes to the dwelling form, the gen general form, the residential condo building association form. All those things are staying the same right now. The goal is to change those, you know, in the future. Uh, so those are things just to understand. There are some things that are staying. And this is not going to be a negative impact anywhere. There are many parts of the country this is going to be a positive impact. Okay. Okay. And you know, like you said, you can, you can, you can, as an agent, you can start to lay the value out that, Hey, it looks like this isn't going to affect you this year, but here's this new rating plan. I'm going to keep watching it for you. It could start to affect you in the future. And I know this is a stupid question because uh, Chris, we're talking about the federal government, but don't you think that on some of these, they could have slowly put an increase into them? You know what I mean? I, I know we're talking about the federal government here. That's actually something we've been battling since 2012 with the Bigger Waters Act of, hey, you know, do this thing slowly over time. Just don't slam these people. That's going to cause bankruptcy, foreclosure. It could kill a real estate market. Mm -hmm. It could kill the real estate market. And right now, the real estate market is hot, but it's actually starting to simmer off right now. And there's a couple of things that really could put us in. They, I remember the, uh, the not the Fed chair, but the person who is second in line to him that said there's a possibility that air is starting to leak out of the bubble. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he just said that a couple of days ago when it came to that based on some of the things, especially with the new Delta variant there. Um, and I can imagine like a, a person goes and they, as you said, they go to buy a house and the current owner's paying 700 and they now need to get a loan and it's $6,000. I mean, that's going to hurt your debt to income ratio, right? We give well, yeah, you can do that policy assumption, but here's what people don't realize. In April of 2022, it doesn't matter because everybody's going to have to go into that program. What program? What do you mean by that? The new risk rating 2.0. You know, if you have a FEMA policy, it doesn't matter because all the renewals are going to be rewritten in that program in April of 2022. Gotcha. All policies. Yeah, you might save a little bit this year, but, you know, it's important as agents that we help people understand, hey, Here's what the impacts are going to be in you know, April 2022 right now, unless there are some changes. You know, it's important that we prepare people for that. Okay. Okay. I like that, dude. I but like it's also going to be really important that you, as agents, we advise people, especially on the, what's called the claims variable. Someone buys a house, files a claim at renewal. Now they have this claim variable of three. Now their flood insurance goes up, you know, 400% on top of the regular increase. Wouldn't it have been nice had we could, we could have told them, hey, this is what's going to happen if you file that claim. You've only got about five thousand dollars in damage, but you're gonna be looking at about a ten thousand dollar difference. Now you can make the decision, but it's my job to make sure you have the information. And didn't you say that like someone who buys a house, like let's say they bought it last year, but their rating could go up for their flood insurance because of a claim that happened five, ten, fifteen years ago? Did yeah, you tell well, me something new, like that? In the new program, everybody gets a get out of jail card free. But as soon as you have a claim, they do a twenty year look back. So oh, say there are two claims that a previous owner had. Now you've got one. Now you've got a claim variable of three, and that 20 year it keeps rolling until one of those claims falls off. Oh, wow. That's why I tell people, you know, home insurance and flood insurance. I just did a video yesterday that I'm getting ready to write a blog on. It's called What Role Does Time Play in Flood Insurance, where we talk about wait periods, time that a claim stays on a property, you know, all these different things, how time plays a role in flood insurance. Right. You know, um, anything else on the flood insurance part? Uh, that's about it right now. So, so by doing this, um, the Zig Ziglar said that if you give uh, people what they want, you'll get everything you need. Um, uh, Chris Green, if you don't follow him once again, just bought his dream house, his house that he thought he would get one day when he was like, what, 50 or 60. Yep. Um, blew his wife's mind. She's, you know, she's always taken, Chris, you tell me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like when I talk to you, she's always taken you seriously and, and, and been your biggest supporter, right? Bes besides your mom who passed. she's She's been your biggest supporter. She has. But I think you've kind of surprised her, right? You kind She's kind of like, honey, you're, you know, do you have any side gigs is where you're making all this money, you know? But the thing is, is you're putting forth the effort to say people need to know this. I'm going to give them everything they want. And then it just happens to be that you check the bank account once a month and you go, wow, I'm starting to get everything I need, right? Is that right about that? Uh, it is, but then she's also like, well, where does money come from? Because I still live the same way I did three years ago. Like, That's more good. money comes into the bank account, great, but I'm not going to act like it's there. But if, you know, like I just had to replace a bunch of air conditioning stuff in my house, well, where are we going to come up with it? Well, it's right here. But we're going to act like it's not there. Right. Is your phone buzzing? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Take that off there. I was wondering. I'm like, what the hell is that? I noticed yeah. that when I was on podcast today. I was like, what is that noise? It must have been my phone vibrating on my desk. <laughs>
So Chris, dude, I'm I'm really proud of you, man. You know that I'm a huge supporter of yours. I know that your uh, person you look at, look up to is uh, Marcus Sheridan, uh, and you might be listening to this podcast. And Marcus Sheridan is actually speaking to me and Chris uh, live at Brainshare. Uh, that's going on. No reason for me to promote it anymore. It's too late. Uh, we're we're gonna be. What are we? Uh, what are we? We, we like we're like today's the second, and then we got the twelfth. I'm not good at math. Ten days out, right? What day are you coming in? Coming in Sunday. Sunday, yeah. I'm coming in on Saturday, leaving on Wednesday. I'm actually doing an intake call with Marcus's company tomorrow about being a coach for They Ask You Answer. Really? Man. And that's your guy. That's the dude who changed your way that you thought. So that, I mean, where are you going, Chris? This is just unbelievable. I'm just, you know, when you get out there and you put effort forward, you'll get results no matter what, right? Yeah, like I told my manager the other day, she said, oh, man, I made this terrible screw up. She goes, it's a $2,000 screw up. She goes, what are we going to do? I said, what's my rule? She says, well, if we screw up, we own it. I said, what else do we do? She goes, well, we make sure the customer's not out anything. She goes, but that's a lot of money. I said, it is. I said, but at the end of the day, it's also the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. And I said, because they're going to remember we own. And I said, yeah, we're going to eat it, but you're going to remember that next time. Someone joked with me, well, you should hit their paycheck. I said, no, I shouldn't. I said, you know, they've got to learn this, but it's important that they learn the culture of why we do the right thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that, man. I love that. Chris, uh, you know, we've been on here almost 30 minutes. I think we gave the agents what they want. If they want to reach out to you, once again, give them where they can find you. They can find you on YouTube. They can find you on Facebook. Uh, anywhere else? Our website, floodinsuranceguru.com, on LinkedIn. Uh, you'll probably be able to find me on TikTok soon. I'm still working on some stuff for that. Yeah, that that's a fun one. I told you, I'll tell you what. I'm willing to give up every social app and platform that I have except for TikTok. If I, I mean, TikTok to me is just, it's funny, it's enjoyable, you learn a lot. There's a bunch of conspiracy theories that you can just laugh about out there. I mean, these people who really think this world is flat, you know, it just, it just, it just, it just. There's actually a Facebook group, I think, about that. Oh yeah, there's a ton of it. These, yeah. I mean, I don't know what kind of drugs these people are doing. I just really don't. Um, but anyways, that's, that's their issue, not mine. Chris, I appreciate your time, buddy. Thank you for having me, Jason. No problem. Hey, this has been Chris Green and Jason Cass at Agency Intelligence, where I give you real agents inside real agencies, giving you the real agency intelligence and not the artificial that they try to make you believe out there. This is Cass. He was green. We're out.